Number 38, letter A. How long will it take an 850 kilogram car with a useful power output of 40 horsepower to reach a speed of 15 meters per second, neglecting friction? All right, so always let's first start with the question. It says, how long will it take? Now, on the right-hand side over here, we have a couple of formulas that deal with time directly, right? I mean, I'm noticing that they're in the power equations, namely here and here, okay? So, uh, therefore, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of them and also base it off of what else I'm given, right? And it says, how long will it take? And it gives me a certain mass, right, with a useful power output. Okay, so I know I'm dealing with power and time, and they're giving me a mass as well with a velocity. So I'm thinking, well, how is mass and velocity related, you know, to one another in an energy sense? Oh, right, through kinetic energy, right? Mass and velocity are related to one another to give us kinetic energy. So therefore, I know they're giving me, right, a lot of energy values up there. And thus, I think the best formula, I mean, we can really use either one. Uh, they're both pretty much the same. Uh, but why don't I use, um, change it, why don't I use this one? Just because it deals with energy specifically. All right, but it won't really matter too much. So here it says that the power is equal to my change in energy, all divided by time. Now, if I want to find time, all we got to simply do is cross multiply here, right? Or basically bring the time value from the denominator on the right to the numerator on the left, and therefore the power, uh, which is in the numerator on the left, down into the denominator on the right. Okay, when I do that, it simply becomes T is equal to the change in energy all over P. So to figure out time, I need to know these two things, right? They did tell me the power, because it said with a useful power output of 40 horsepower, but we know we can't put horsepower in here. Power is always in terms of watts in our equation. All right, so therefore my first task is going to be to convert 40 horsepower into watts. So let's do that over here. So we've got 40 horsepower, all right? Let's take that and then multiply it. We, they fortunately gave us a conversion factor in this problem, right? So for every one horsepower, for every one horsepower it's 746 watts. Horsepowers cancel, and therefore it's just a simple multiplication, right? So it's 40 times 746, which we get a value and I'll do three significant figures here, a value of 2.98 times 10 raised to the fourth, it looks like, right? And that is in terms of watts. So this is the power value, okay? So I know this piece. I'll just check it off for now, okay? Let me put a little check. Now, what's the energy component? Well, it says the change in energy I have to have at the top, right? So um, it says how long will it take, blah, 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 this mass of a car to reach a speed of 15 meters per second. So if I want to find the change, that means I need to know the initial and the final state. Well, it tells me explicitly what the final state is, right? It says it's going to be 15 meters per second. It's going to reach that speed. It doesn't though, tell me exactly what the initial is. So what I have to do is I have to assume, right? It doesn't say it's starting from rest. But if, you know, if, if I don't assume that, then I can choose any value I want in between. And uh, I guess I could be right, depending upon, but again, if it's not mentioned, uh, it's usually safe to assume that it is starting from rest, although it doesn't state that um, explicitly, okay? So let's now uh, take a look at then the kinetic energy formula, right? Because that's how, remember we mentioned before, mass and velocity are related to energy via that formula. So now let me rewrite that. So kinetic energy, right? And change in kinetic energy would be equal to one half times the mass, times then the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared, okay? That's just the change formula. I developed it back several problems ago. So here the kinetic energy is now going to be equal to one half multiplied by the mass of the object that whose velocity is changing. So that is 850 kilograms. Multiplied then by the final velocity squared. So that's 15 meters per second, great. And the initial we said was zero, okay? And I'll close it out with a parenthesis. So now all we gotta simply do is calculate this, right? So let's just throw it on into the calculator. So 0 0.5 times 850 times 15 squared, then we get a value of 9.5, eh, 9.56, right? Times 10 looks like to the fourth. Yep, times 10 to the fourth, and that is in terms of joules. So this would be the change in energy, and namely the, you know, or specifically I should say the change in kinetic energy. There is no potential energy to this part of the problem because it didn't change height at all. So therefore, the total change in energy here is simply just the change in kinetic energy. And that being the case, I finally found this component. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Now I can simply take my value of 
5, 6 times 10 to the fourth. Simply divide it then by the power we found above, 2.98 times 10 to the fourth, and we will find the time. So 9.56 times 10 to the fourth, and divide that by 2.98 times 10 to the fourth. And it comes out to 3. Point, right about 3.21. And that's in terms of seconds, okay? 3.21 seconds. So that takes care of that. And that is for letter A. All right, now let's take a look at letter B. So how long, okay, same question, will this acceleration take if the car also climbs a three meter high hill in the process? Hmm. So what do you think is gonna change now in this question? Right, if you, if you think through the concepts we just covered, there's only one little way this is going to change. It's not a totally new problem. It's an easy add-on, all right? The power has stayed the same for the car. That hasn't changed. It's still going to produce this amount of, uh, this, this many watts, 2.98 times 10 to the 4 watts, right? That's not going to change. And it's still, we're still looking to obtain the final speed of 15 meters per second. So did the kinetic energy change? No, that's going to stay the same. So then how did, what else did it do? Well, it's also climbing a hill. Well, in terms of energy, if something climbs a hill, what are we changing? We're changing its potential energy, right? Here is where potential energy and height are related to one another. Uh, re excuse me, related to one another, excuse me. So the potential energy, that's what happens when your mind is moving too quick. So potential energy is equal to the mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration, multiplied then by the change in the height, all right? So the change in potential energy here would be simply equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by the final height, oops, the final height minus the initial height, okay? So the change in potential energy now should be simply the mass, right, 850, multiplied by 9.80, then multiplied by, it went up three meters and it started, I'm assuming, at a value of zero. So now the change in potential energy all right, would simply be equal to, so 850 times 9.8 times three. So we get 2. 2.50 times 10 to the fourth, times 10 to the fourth, and that is in terms of joules, okay? Because it's a potential energy. So now, think back to this step of the formula over here on the right-hand side, all right? And think back to this part specifically, the change in energy. So not only now do we have kinetic energy, but we also have now potential energy, right? So another way I can rewrite this formula basically is gonna be, let me do it over here. So time now is equal to, I know it's the change in energy, but even more specifically, it's really the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, right? All divided then by the power produced by the car. So now, the change in kinetic energy was 9.56 times 10 to the fourth, I'm gonna run out of room, plus, right, uh, the change in potential energy, which we just calculated to be 2.50 times 10 to the fourth, and that addition divided by then the power, which was still the same of 2.98 times 10 to the fourth. All right, and that will find our time, and it should be longer, and it will be, right? Two, so let's calculate. So 9.56 times 10 to the fourth plus 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. Divide that whole thing by 2.98 times 10 to the fourth. And we get a value of 4.05, right? 4.05, and that is in terms of seconds. And it should take longer, right? Because the reason why is because part of this power being produced by the car, part of the energy per time, right, that the car is producing, is now, instead of going exclusively to increasing its kinetic energy, some of that power also now has to go to increasing its potential energy. All right, so we're only getting then a fraction of that total amount of work increasing the kinetic energy. All right, so it should take a little longer. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please, please remember to subscribe, that'd be great. And uh, if you're feeling a little extra generous, hit that like button. Thank you so much, take care.